Hey guys, welcome to Royal Emporium. Will and Drew asked if I would show you guys how I process fresh honey straight from the hives. Have an antique spinner. It's galvanized tin and it is food grade safe. It's actually been coated with food grade epoxy. So anything the honey touches has been washed, cleaned thoroughly cap or remove the wax from the frames talk a little bit about that put a couple of frames in here spin them out strain the honey through two different sieves so that we remove any of the wax particles and any of the smaller pieces put it into a collection pan and then show you how we actually pour it up into bottles so thank you for taking time to join this afternoon we're going to work through the process of capping a couple of frames of honey today I'm not close enough to the screen to actually see any comments or questions. Hope I'll be able to answer those later for you. But thank you for taking time again this afternoon to join. You note that I've got on the gloves because the honey is extremely sticky. You can see from where I was working prior to today that the honey is still on the capping tool. And that's actually honey that the bees have made to cover each of the individual cells so that their honey will stay in place. It's the same wax they actually use to cover the cells that will be lived in by bees on other frames. Now this is a frame that's actually had the honey already removed from it. It has a plastic backing plate and honey cells on either side of that plate. The plate runs down the center of the frame and I have eight of these in what we call a super and I have two supers on each of the three hives. So we have a potential of 48 of these in the three hives. And of the 48, I only removed a total of 16. And I've already processed all of them but the last two. So what I'm going to do today is actually show you how I remove the caps and process the last two. Some of you may have seen the Facebook Live. Thank you for watching that and hope you enjoy here. As I noted, I can't read the comments. So maybe I can get to your questions and answer them later. This hive should have been completely sealed. There's some scratched areas on it where I've actually bumped it against the other frames in the box. But this is wax. And what I'm doing with this tool is actually lifting the wax covers individually from the cells. I'm holding it over this box so that any honey that drips out can be collected in the bottom and processed the same way. So, so that you can see this better, bring it over and give you a look at what the pure honey looks like once the caps have been scraped off. And again, the caps are only one layer thick of beeswax. So we'll go ahead and scrape the honey from this frame, do the same to the other side, and then we'll do another frame because the spinner actually has to be balanced. It has to have a frame or more on either side and then centrifugal force will actually cause the honey to be spun from the individual cells. So we're going to slowly do this and get each of these as much uncapped as possible. And the wax that I take off here will not end up in the strainer. If I leave any on, it may fling off or swing off related to the force, but it's perfectly fine even if it's in the final product because this beeswax like other that you can actually purchase that has not been processed is entirely consumable or edible. So we'll go ahead and continue down this side capping each of the individual cells. One of the things we look for when we're pulling frames from honey is that any cell that has honey in it needs to be capped or covered and we want at least 95, 98% of those cells covered because any that may not be covered, the honey may still contain a large amount of water or moisture. And water or moisture in fresh honey is one of the very few things that can make it go bad. Now honey in general, if it's processed correctly and cleanly, can last for centuries, if not thousands of years. There's actually colloquial stories about the tombs of some of the pharaohs having honey in them. And that honey today, although it's crystallized, 
could still be consumed. So it's considered safe after several thousand years. Well, you will notice this is absolutely golden yellow, light colored honey, and the wax is also light colored. The wax, after it's been in the frame in the hive for several weeks or months, can actually change color and become dark. That does not mean that the wax has gone bad or that the honey has gone bad. If you imagine living in an area where you have something sticky on your feet every time you enter your home, you're going to pick up things with your shoes and bring them into your entry rug or your foyer, and you're going to have to vacuum or mop and clean that area. Well, if you never do that, it's going to result in changing color to your rug or your foyer area. And that's actually what happens to the wax on these individual frames. The little bees go out and crawl around on plants. They touch dark surfaces with pollen. They bring that pollen back, and as they walk all over the frame, they actually deposit some of that color. So this is what we've done so far. I've actually kept this entire side and this entire side, so the wax is removed. And what you see is about five to seven pounds of honey. So I'm actually going to put this in one side of the frame, spinner, and I'm going to leave it. We may have to adjust that later. I'm going to set it in there and actually get another frame out. And we'll do the same thing here. You will see that there are some holes that are not capped. But those holes are actually vacant. They don't have any honey in them. They don't have any water in them. And they don't have any eggs or baby bees in them. And this side, with the exception of about six or eight holes, is completely capped with wax. So this is what I would call 98 to 100% capped. And this is from 2021, when I put it in empty with just the plastic liner. And the bees, over time, have built all the wax that's included here. The full thickness of either side of this. Remember, there's a piece of plastic down the center. And I'll show that to you again after I've spun the honey off of it. But this is pristine yellow gold, pure honey. And it's rather warm out here today. I'm actually in my garage. And the temperature in the garage is somewhere around 80 degrees. I have no AC system or anything out here. And that's actually beneficial for the honey. I don't want to heat, and I never heat my honey because that actually damages some of the nutritional and health benefits of the honey. So I'm rather warm out here, but that will actually make the honey separate from the frame much easier than if it were colder temperature. One of the reasons that it's warmer out here also is that I have sealed myself in the garage. I've closed the garage door because honeybees are approaching something in the year that we call dearth. If you will look outside your windows, if you're in the south, growing season, blooming season for most flowers is coming to a temporary end. So it's hard for the bees to find any pollen anywhere. So they will actually rob from other hives, or in the case of me having open honey here in the garage, they would literally come in and try to rob honey from the box, which literally is honey that I robbed from them. Now, do I trade something to them for the honey I robbed? Yes. I make sure that they have food, shelter, and safety year-round. If they wish to leave, they can leave at any time. There's no way for me to keep them maintained. So they get to live a free lifestyle, and they make honey, and I take some of it, and I leave enough for them to survive through dearth. And then in the fall, I may or may not take more, but then I would leave enough for them to survive through the winter. Now, if at any time I take what I feel is too much honey, I will go back and I will label all of the existing and remaining frames with a date or a number or a sign that indicates that I have fed the bees. And when I feed the bees, I feed them a mixture of sugar and water. And you don't want that sugar and water to become part of the harvest of honey. So you make sure that you label each of your frames so that you know that you're only getting sugar water or that you're only getting honey. And this one, for example, only says 2021. And it actually said 2020 and had a mark through it. 
the 2020 indicates that it was a frame from year before last, but that it was either one, never filled, or two, filled and left over the year for the bees to use as food during dearth or during winter. I had another frame with a label on it that says, no food, or a circle with a line through it and the word feed or food written beside of it. And that indicates to me that I had it in a box where I was providing feed, but that I either removed it while feeding or put it back in after feeding was complete so that I would know that that frame had no funny honey in it or no sugar in it whatsoever. One of the issues with buying honey from large producers is you don't know if it's pure honey and you don't know if it contains any syrup or other additives. I can assure you this is pure honey. There will be nothing added to this, nothing taken away from this, and as you see when I spin it, it's all going to go into a collection pot. And we're going to take off one set of gloves so that I'm not quite so sticky. And use the spinner to get some honey out of these. I wish I could bring the camera over and hold this at the same time, but I cannot. But this device will cause a spinning motion of the chamber that's inside. And the centrifugal force will cause the honey to spin out. So I'm going to be quiet for a few moments while I spin the honey from this and then rotate. I really wish you could see this. It's like cotton candy spinning off of the frames onto the side. It's the same long strings of sugar, it's just a different form of sugar. It's God's pure honey sugar. So before I turn them over, I'm going to spin them in the opposite direction and let the honey have the opportunity to come out from the other side of the same frame. And then I'm going to leave them in the same direction as far as front and back, and I'm going to revolve them upside down. All of this is related to gravity and centrifugal force. Trying to get the honey to fall into the can. Hey, B, I'm looking for your honey girl. Trying to get all of the honey to go out either with centrifugal force or with gravity or with both. And the honey that's left remaining in the frames, I will take back and give to the bees so that they can store it in other empty chambers within their hive. So I think we've gotten everything out of that side of each frame that we possibly can. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the opposite side of each frame. So again, we've spun honey out of a frame on one side. And this is the side that's been spun out. You can actually very clearly see the white base in the background. Almost all of the honey is gone. And this is the side that was facing inward. On either frame, they're still filled with honey. So we're going to now turn this in the outward direction on this side. And then we'll pick this one up. Again, almost all of the honey is gone from this side. This side is still filled. We'll turn this one outward facing this direction. And once again, centrifugal force and gravity to see how much honey we can extract. and then in the opposite direction. And then very much as I did with the other side, I'm going to take the frame, same side out, flip it over, take the frame, same side out, Flip it over, 
and give it one last good whirl to try to remove any of the last bit of honey that may be in it. Take these now and put them back in their container so that they can be taken out and put back in the individual bee hives so that the bees can refill them, can clean them thoroughly, and can reuse them. No, you probably can't see, or at the very least, it's difficult to see, but there is at least an inch and a half, if not two inches of honey, in the bottom of the tub. So the inch and a half to two inches of honey that's in the bottom of that tub will equate to about three quarters of a quart or a full quart jar of additional honey. And this is filled up to here. Now all of that did not come out of the two frames that I just spun, but it came out of those two plus six others. So a total of eight hives or eight frames that I've spun today. And we're now going to open the gate and let the honey run through a two-stage sieve. Now as you can imagine, the larger one is for large chunks of honey and bee parts. And unfortunately, there are some sacrificial bees. And the smaller sieve will actually catch the smaller pieces of honey and the smaller body parts or particulates. We'll actually set this in the collection pot, set this one on top, and then this is the part that absolutely amazes me, is how beautiful this honey is once you open it up to let it flow. So we will let that filter for a moment while I grab a quart jar. I need a jar, a quart jar of any size, whatever you got. There we go. Thank you. Wife in the kitchen is always very helpful. So as you can see, the honey runs out into the larger sieve. And again, with gravity our friend. It pulls down into the bottom of this sieve, runs around each of the 1 8 inch holes, and with time, gravity again, it flows down into the next strainer and then there into the pot which we'll use to fill. I know many of you may have questions related to keeping the bees safe or damaging the bees or how do you know if the bees are all female for example. In a general hive, there is one queen. There may be more than one. They will fight or duel to the death. The queen is the only female in the hive that has been mated. When a new queen is born, she takes a virgin flight one time and may mate with as many as 15 to 20 drone or male bees from other hives. That's the only time in her life she will ever have sex or intercourse or mate. From that point forward, she can lay millions of eggs. If she becomes too old or non-productive, the bees can grow a new queen and may or will actually kill the old queen. The remaining bees other than the queen that are in the hive, the nurse bees, the janitor bees, the working bees, the feeder bees, the bees that build the comb, the bees that destroy comb and make it for different use. They change it, change it, for example, from an egg comb to a honey comb. All of those are female. Their entire life, roughly 35 to 40 days during the summer and possibly up to three to four months in the winter, is spent actually taking care of the hive. The male bees, they're there to be fed. They're there to fly out and mate with a queen if they happen to get lucky enough to and in dearth and in winter they get run outside the hive and may actually either starve to death or freeze to death. So when I kind of jokingly said, hey girl, are you looking for your honey? I know for a fact she is a female bee. The drones generally don't venture far from the hive and when they do, they're approximately twice the size of a normal female bee. Now the queen herself is not broad and wide like the drones but the queen is up to two and a half to three times bigger than any of the bees, including the drones. But hers is in length rather than in girth. So she's a much larger bee and generally slightly different color. She may be solid color along her abdomen and her thorax. She may be a couple of different verging or converging colors. But it's obvious when you see the queen, 
and generally it's very difficult to see the queen when you look in a hive because one, she's either laying an egg or two, she's hiding from you because she doesn't want to be found. Her livelihood is more or less what keeps the hive going. If something happens to the queen and the hive has not managed to start a new queen growing by randomly taking a female egg and feeding it um, royal jelly, then the, the hive could actually die. So if something happens to the queen, unintentionally or unexpectedly, a hive could literally die or could abscound or join with another hive. So at this point, I've got three hives, three fully active queens that are laying, and probably three to 400,000 bees that are making honey. So we've taken time to let this drain through, take off the top filter. I'm going to set it in this pan so the honey doesn't get on the floor. And I'm going to set it in this pan with this on top of it, even though it's not completely filtered. There's still a bit in there. It will be safe there. Now, this is still very full of honey, but even at that, I have yellow gold. looks like black gold in here. But I have honey in this, and it's just as simple and straightforward as... And I'm going to hold it over the pizza pan so I don't make a sticky mess on the floor. But it's just as simple as literally pouring the honey into a jar and then sealing it up to give away or sell. And there is a market where I've seen honey sell as high as $250 a gallon. And I've seen it sell as low as $75 a gallon. So if you're in an area where someone has bees, and they know specifically what is blooming during the time that they put frames on their hive, they can generally tell you exactly what kind of honey they have. Could be sourwood honey, could be almond honey, and yes, you saw me wipe that with my finger. This one's going to go in the house and be for us, and I will label it as such. But this is what pure honey looks like, straight from the bee, and it took one to 200,000 bees, a long time to make that. If you think about a bee flying thousands of miles during its life and touching millions of flowers during its life and coming and going every day for 35 days to bring pollen and nectar and anything and everything else back to the hive that's necessary, this is the end product. And I have roughly three gallon of that on my table right now from where I've already gathered some honey from this year. And if you want to see the, the live video from Royal Emporium, it's out there from last night. I think we've already had 2,000 or 2,500 views. I encourage you to watch that if you want to see the process more thoroughly. Please join my YouTube channel. Go out and look for that. Burnett's Forge, Burnett's Blacksmith and Bees. But I've put the link in the description for this. And just want to say thank you for taking time to join this afternoon. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will look back through the comments and see if I can answer any of your questions. So thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you have a great rest of the day.